This very interesting circuit is the insides of a stun gun. I can't show you the full thing, there is no case for this, simply because it's illegal to own and carry a stun gun in the UK. When they first started appearing, the media came out with a story about how a postman had been held up with a stun gun and all his mail was stolen, and then instantly, overnight, they banned them. So the only way I was able to get one was subsequently when I visited America, I saw one and wondered how do they generate such a high voltage and the voltage that they generate is not as high as they say. They usually say things like 100,000 volts, a million volts. It's not. Uh, the inner gap of these contacts is the bit that decides the actual open circuit voltage and it's usually 15 to 20 millimetres which suggests 15 to 20,000 volts. However, I bought this in America to take apart. I tried it on my leg in the hotel room. I basically stuck it in my thigh and pulled the trigger and I can testify that these really hurt quite a lot. It made it feel black and blue for quite some time afterwards. So I stripped the circuit board out and uh, brought it home the luggage purely as a novelty. And so we can now explore the circuitry. Now, I'm going to warn you in advance, electrical sparking, which is going to occur between these electrodes here, is extremely loud. It's very brief pulses. It might not even show up in the camera. But I'm going to warn you, it's going to be extremely loud. So if you've got headphones on or a speaker, I'm not sure how this recording device handles percussive electrical sparks. But I'm going to be doing it in five, four, three, two, one. One. See? Loud. Now, did you notice there was also a spark between this little crisscross of metal? Let me show you that. It does have a discharge circuit. I'm not sure how long it takes to discharge. The transformer here and the transformer here are the main components of how it does its magic. But because I've got the circuit board out already, I can go straight to pictures. So a close-up of the circuit board. If we look at the circuit board, the most interesting bit is this crisscrossed piece of metal. That has a very precise gap. I mean, it's a rough gap, but it, it's quite small. That is a spark gap. It's literally arcing between those to actually fire the main transformer. If we zoom out a little bit more so you can actually see the rest of the circuitry, we have a transistor dangling off the bottom here. That's this transistor here. And it has an arrangement with a feedback winding from this transformer to self-oscillate. The output goes via this chain of diodes here, and there's four high-speed diodes in series. They're 1,000 volts each, and they charge this uh, 220 nanofarad capacitor up to a high voltage um, in series with the output transformer's primary. Let me show you the back of the circuit board. Here is the back of the circuit board showing the arrangement of the windings. It is three completely separate windings, and it's interesting to note that the high voltage output is completely isolated from the uh, primary side. And that is quite good because uh, when I played with this initially, I was running up and down the zip of my work jacket, and uh, it arced through the plastic case onto the finger and gave me quite a significant zap. Uh, so that's probably part of the reason that they try and isolate the high voltage side. In this case, uh, because the trigger was in here, it just jumped. Um, oh, it must have found... Actually, I'm trying to work out how it did it then. It must have been the vicinity of these electrodes here to the trigger. Uh, but let me show you the schematic of this. It's quite interesting. And then I'll show you a picture of the output transform because that is also very interesting. I'm just going to zoom in on this. It is zoomed. Let's explore the magic of converting 9 volts to 20,000 volts. So here's the PP3 battery. The voltage of the battery is initially 9 volts, but it draws very high current and it will pull the voltage in that battery down. There is a trigger, which is basically just a little button here, and that provides power to the initial circuitry. Now, there is a primary winding in series with the transistor. I should write what these are, so I'm going to write FB for feedback, uh, primary, P-R-I, for primary and secondary. And I could also write P-R-I for primary and secondary over here. So initially, when you turn it on, 
current flows, a small amount of current flows through this 2K resistor and the feedback winding and that diode and starts turning the transistor on. As soon as the transistor starts turning on properly, it uh, induces uh, a magnetic field by driving the primary coil. That induces a feedback uh, circuit, current in the feedback coil, which then goes via this diode to the base of the transistor and provides a good solid switch on. This appears to be to provide a current path for that. It's quite an unusual arrangement of circuitry. But once it's started, it builds up the field, and then when it reaches a saturation point and it can't build the field up anymore, the current transfer reduces the feedback winding, reduces its uh, feedback to the transistor, and the transistor turns off, and uh, as it collapses, it holds itself off, and then it starts the whole process again and basically just oscillates. That generates a fairly high voltage on the secondary winding of this little transformer here. And that is rectified by this cluster of ultra-fast UF4007 diodes. They're like the 1N4007 diode, but the UF is the fast recovery indication. It lets them operate at much higher frequency, which is what this is operating at. That rectified current, and note the diode orientation, is really just to suit the probably the transformer here. Are they marked in that direction? They are marked in that direction. It doesn't really matter ultimately, but it will suit that the m most active side of that circuit the, uh, when the transistor is actually turning on and gives it the highest drive. But uh, the current flows through this very low resistance primary coil and it charges this capacitor. When the voltage across the capacitor and the coil reaches a high enough level here, that's the spark gap. It sparks across. When it does so, it creates an ionized path of air and it acts like a SIDAC or a neon indicator when they're used for such things. And the initiation of the spark gap means that the voltage uh, required to keep the air ionized is much lower and it provides a really high current pulse as it discharges this capacitor through the primary coil. There is a 10 mega ohm resistor there, a very small quarter watt 10 mega ohm resistor across thousands of volts that seems like a design weakness to me but anyway that is coupled across a very special transformer i'll show you that in a moment to the secondary which has a quite low resistance 75 ohms and then you've got the two sets of electrodes the inner electrodes that are designed to cap the voltage that's these ones here and uh and the outer electrodes which are designed to make, uh, well the inner electrodes, they're not just designed to cap the voltage to about that 15 to 20,000 volts, but they also put on that show the loud crackling noise and the spark zapping across the front. But when you apply it to someone, it then sparks instead through their clothing. It takes a shorter path and goes through the fabric and uh, across their fleshy bits and gives them a zap, fundamentally. Now, the transformer. The secretary transformer is quite interesting. It's this big uh, thing here. And if we look down the end of it, we can see that there is an actual iron core in it. And it's made of sort of like just standard iron plates. And it's got a very small number of primary turns around. I'm not really sure how many because what the manufacturing process of this is they've uh, put the primary in and then they've put insulation uh, paper around it. And then they've round one layer of windings of fairly thick looking wire, actually, uh, presumed so it can deliver spiky high current pulses but uh, they wind one layer of windings and then they put a layer of insulating paper and then they wind another layer of windings and that more insulating paper and they build up the number of windings uh, in multiple layers like that and then the whole lot is filled with resin and they pull a vacuum on it to remove all the air so this is sort of vacuum potted in resin because it has to be for the high voltage and um, ultimately what that means is when the spark gap fires and dumps this capacitor through the small turn primary, it steps up to a much higher voltage at lower current, but still significant current. And that's what sparks across the output. So if you've always wondered, how did they create such a high voltage from such a small circuit and such a small 9 volt battery? Well, this is it. That's the circuitry that's involved in doing that. So quick summary, a uh, little single transistor oscillator with a transformer stepping up, getting rectified through his dials, charging this capacitor via the primary spark gap there, dumps capacitor across the primary in this one, and uh, generates the high voltage in the output. Very clever, very interesting devices indeed.